We do everything ourselves. We do the strategy ourselves, we do the IT systems ourselves, we do everything ourselves. That's a challenge. Delighted to be speaking to someone who's right in the middle of this ecosystem. He's a partner at the director's office, he's an independent director, and he's chairman of the board of the European Depository Bank as well, Charles Muller. Charles, good afternoon. Good afternoon, nice to be here, thank you. Very good to have you here. Uh, now, Charles, firstly, you've been involved in the financial sector for a long time, haven't you? Years, in fact, right? Uh, you're making me old. Uh, yes, uh, it's almost uh, even more than 30 years. Yes. Well, congratulations for oh. surviving. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Now, one of the phenomena that we've been experiencing and, in fact, been talking a little bit about is uh, the challenges and changes in banks, uh, and in particular, the difficulty in opening bank accounts. Why is that problem occurring now? Well, the fun part about my job now as an independent director is that uh, through my different mandates I get to see all kinds of situations and on this particular um, a topic I get to see both sides. I am on the board of uh, funds and of corporate entities that want to open bank accounts and I'm the chairman of EDB where we are on the receiving side of this demand uh, to open bank accounts. So why do we have um, uh, these problems today? Well, one of the problems I see is that the service providers, the uh, administrators of all these uh, companies, they have a certain tendency to also always go to the same banks. They are used to working for years and years with this bank or that bank, the big household names that you, that, that you see. And so there is a long queue, so they stand in line to open a bank account there. While there are new service providers like EDB, but others as well, uh, who uh, would have much more capability and would be able to respond uh, quicker, but they are not on their list of preferred providers. So that's, I think, one issue uh, to that. And then obviously, uh, you've talked about the 30 years. Now, what I've seen over the 30 years is a constant stream and increase in documentation. We are also happy that the FATF visit is over. We did very and well. I mean, and that was good news for Luxembourg, wasn't it, the result of that? Uh, absolutely. It was good news for Luxembourg in general. It was good news for the finance industry. But it comes at a cost. The cost is more legislation, better implementation of legislation, which means more paperwork, more people looking after the accounts, more, more, more. And that if you have a reduced number of people available, and in Luxembourg we have for the moment a, a, a challenge that we don't have enough skilled people, then uh, there is a big competition to get those skilled people and they have so much work that they cannot cope with every demand that they get and so that creates the cues to open bank accounts. Now I, I get it with paperwork in terms of reasonable paperwork. I'm a corporate, I want to open an account, I supply some accounts. But it seems as though the, the list of documentary demands has just become absurd, hasn't it? Well, uh, if 30 years ago you would have told me that you needed to provide the things that we now find normal, you would have found that absurd as well. So I think it's just an evolution in things. If you look at every piece of paper individually, you will say, yes, that makes sense. But if you then look at the, the bulk of, uh, of uh, documentation that you have to provide, and you say, it's impossible. So, as I said, I'm, I'm the receiving end as well. When I see, when I have to open a bank, oh, they are asking for this and for that. It's getting impossible, but each piece of paper, individual, I would say, has its merits. I understand why the bank, because I'm also on the banking side, I understand why the bank is asking for that. Now, let's just talk about European Depository Bank for a second, mm -hmm. because I've, I've seen one or two quite big commercials yes. for the bank, and I think it even promises to open bank accounts within five days. Is that true? or you can open bank accounts even much quicker than that. Uh, it, our time is, if you, we get the right documentation, it's quite easy for us to open the account. The, it's the back and forth that normally takes time. You get one set of documentation that leads to questions. You go back, uh, we need this additional documentation. That's not at hand, so the service provider or the person asking to open the bank accounts has to go and get that piece of paper. That is what makes the process lengthy. Uh, but certainly, five days you can do it if everything is clear, if it's a low-risk account, if you have no politically exposed persons in the account. You know, all these things that suddenly make make an account opening more difficult. And is it a digital bank in the sense of a lot of these processes are automated? We try to automate as much as possible. It's not always possible. There is still this human element. In the end, somebody has to assess, look at the paperwork and say, this is fine, 
we have all we need. So not everything is automatable for the moment. Perhaps with artificial intelligence we will progress. But we try to, to uh, have digital solutions for as much as we can. And is it, so it's not just for funds then, could uh, a, an SME open a bank account at the EDB? Yes. And that would be sufficient to do their business banking in Luxembourg? Yes, they get a Luxembourg, that's important for, I think for Luxembourg, a Luxembourg IBAN number. We are a Luxembourg bank uh, and uh, they uh, need that normally, the first step is to go to the notary to open the company. They need a certificate de blocage. Uh, we provide that and then you can go. I mean, this is a quite a serious challenge to the local Luxembourg banks, isn't it, having a bank like that? Or oh, there are others, uh, as I said, I, I, I'm obviously happy with my <laughs> the bank, I, I, I'm the, the chairman of the board of, but uh, there are others providing uh, that as well. And I think it's the future. You've seen what Revolut um, has done for personal bank accounts. Now Revolut also has its challenges. I don't want to take that too much as an example, but the trend is very clearly to this new disrupting banking entities that are, that are um, coming our way. So let's just talk about the industry and the big picture then. Do you imagine that the local legacy banks, are they going to wake up and change or will they just diminish? They are, I think, waking up as well. You can do more uh, via digital means with the local banks uh, as well. But uh, if you have a big boat, in order to change direction of the big boat, it's much more complicated than if you start from nothing and you can immediately start a little flexible boat that goes uh, uh, somewhere else. So, so it's a challenge for big banks. Also in terms of IT systems, in terms of people, of culture, there is a lot you need to change in order to be agile enough. Now, I guess as chairman of the board, uh, one of the topics here will be governance and ensuring that the bank does sort of adhere to good governance. Are there any particular lessons or examples of things that you've learned and you thought, wow, this is really in the front light, this, we're in the headlights of governance? Well, um, uh, before EDB became EDB, was um, uh, taken over by Apex Group, it was a sort of sleepy uh, German subsidiary bank. Uh, so we had um, a culture shock with, you know, Apex is anything but sleepy. Uh, so uh, uh, a lot of things going on uh, at the same time. We had to review everything. Um, uh, we redid our governance because you were talking about governance. We have now a majority of independent uh, directors. The chairman of the board is an independent. And what is um, a challenge, but at the same time, uh, an, a nice challenge is the fact that our parent company is not a bank. Most banks in Luxembourg are the subsidiary of a bank abroad. So they take the IT systems and the procedures from their mother house. We do everything ourselves. We do the strategy ourselves, we do the IT systems ourselves, we do everything ourselves. That's a challenge and sometimes uh, a, a bit more work and a bit more worry than, than you would otherwise have. And I know that for you personally, so you've got this governance hat, you've got this chairman hat, and, and you're really involved in other things too, aren't you? I mean, you seem to be a very active guy. You must be so busy. Uh, I try to keep myself busy, sometimes too busy, my wife tells me. Uh, uh, we see, but uh, yes, I have a, 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 my non-profit making organization called Finance and Human Rights, where we look at ESG, but from the S angle. And I uh, had a little political involvement uh, as well. Yeah, I was going to just say finals. We've mm. just got one minute left mm. now. Uh, as we look forward to elections in October, any prediction for who might be prime minister or who might be in power? The uh, question that the voters gets asked is not who gets pr uh, to be prime minister, but what co coalition we will have, what parties will be in government. Now, if everybody votes like me, it's not a, a surprise. If everybody votes like me, it's some Tonso who is going to be number one. Now, I have the feeling that not everybody is going to vote like me. So we'll have to see who will be in the coalition. Uh, can the current coalition continue? They have a very small majority of just 31 seats out of 60. Uh, if they just lose one seat, they are gone. Uh, and then it's the comeback of the CSV as a government party. And then I think Luc Frieden has fair chances of being the next prime minister. Charles Muller from the Director's Office and Independent Director and from the European Business Depository Bank. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Charles. you very much. Thank you.